I'd like to welcome everyone here. Welcome back to the His Holiness Bhakti Chirtha Swami's Vyasa Puja online celebrations 2023. This is day two, session one. And we will just wait one more minute, about two minutes, minute and a half to get started. Thank you all for coming back. Welcome again to His Holiness Bhakti Chirta Swami's Vyasa Puja Online Celebrations 2023. Today we have a fabulous lineup. And again, I want to remind everyone that we are having interpretations in both Spanish and Portuguese. And you can click on the global sim symbol below in order to receive access. And so today we will have, first we're going to start off with a video from His Holiness Bhaktichirtha Swami. Next, we will have an introduction from His Holiness Chandramali Swami, uh, followed by an introduction uh, by Gurudas Prabhu. And we will have a presentation from His Holiness Bhakti Charandeshna Swami, and followed by a video from His Holiness Bhaktichirtha Swami on his journey to Ghana. And after that, we will have a lovely session too. All right, so we are going to begin by welcoming everyone back, and we will begin with a video from His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami on Kirtan. So let's enjoy uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami's Kirtan and welcome back. Again, we're welcoming everyone back, and we are about to get started for today. I just announced the lineup, and we are about to have a video from His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami, and we're going to watch one of his magnificent kirtans. Thank you all for joining us again. And so for today's session, we will start off with Bhakti Tirtha Swami's video, followed by His Holiness Chandramali Swami Maharaj, who will share his words um, about His Holiness, followed by a quiz on His Holiness Bhakti Chirtha Swami. And then we will have a introduction by His Grace Gurudas Prabhu, followed by a presentation by His Holiness Bhakti Charandeshna Swami, followed by a video presentation on His Holiness Bhakti Chirtha Swami's journey in Ghana. And then we will have a closing first session and we will return shortly after for a second session. So I'd like to welcome everyone back and we are looking forward to an exciting day. And I think right now we're just loading up the uh, Kirtan video of His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami so that we can set the mood and get ready. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back, everyone. That was a wonderful way to begin to set the mood and get us in the mindset of Bhakti Tirtha Swami on this auspicious weekend that we are celebrating. So we are going to have a uh, slight modification in our schedule today. I would like to uh, first call forth uh, Chittaketu Prabhu Das from Ghana to offer a garland to His Holiness Bhakti Dhiral Damodar Swami. Uh, but His Holiness Bhakti Dhiral Damodar Swami is a disciple of His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami and has been serving in ISKCON uh, since the 1980s. He is the first African sannyasi and diksha guru in ISKCON. He regularly teaches the Bhakti Shastri and Bhakti Vaivav courses at the Vrindavan Institute of Higher Education and the Mayapur Institute and facilitates numerous seminars on practical aspects of Krishna conscious philosophy, such as community building, self-sufficiency, etc. He has also authored a book entitled Spiritual Connection, Understanding the Dynamics of Guru-Disciple Relationship to help devotees take the next step in their spiritual journey. He tours and pre preaches extensively in Brazil, India, Mauritius, and Se Seychelles, the United States, and different countries in Africa to deliver the message of Krishna consciousness. Following the desire of his spiritual master, His Holiness Bhaktidhiradami, Bhakti Dira Damodar Swami is also developing vibrant Krishna conscious self-sustainable farm communities in Ghana, Nigeria, and Nigeria, Africa. Maharaj is also known for his humility, gravity, and deep knowledge of the scriptures, being a perfect example of a li living his guru's legacy. And we'd like to welcome His Holiness Bhakti Dira Damodar Swami back. Thank you so much. Uh, for coming back today and blessing us with your presence. And thank you so much, Kit, uh, Chitra Ketu Prabhu, uh, Putra uh, Das, for offering this garland to Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. <laughs> I'm not aware I'm going to speak today. <laughs> you, you're welcome to open up and just set the mood for today's uh, <laughs> session. <laughs> so however Guru yeah, David inspires you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being very sharp. All right. <laughs> Namo Vishnu Padia Krishna, Prisaya Bhutale, Sermati, Bhakti Tritta Swami, and Mr. Krishna Padaya Prabhupada, she told me she got a current and said, Bhakti Tritta Chinana. Namo Vishnu Padia Krishna, Prisaya Bhutale, she walked to be done to Swami Chinana. I will say Sarasati, Devi Gora Vani Pricharin. There is a Sasunya Bhagi Pasta Chadisati. Jashir Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Chananda Sri Adwaita Nadadara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhai Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Isolanes Bhakti Tita Swami Maharaj Kiya I remember Hmm. What the Gurudev did for my personal life that I feel he is the bona fide spiritual master that can lead can lead my life. I have mentioned many times that I didn't accept him because he's black like me. It is not external reason. It is based on spiritual reason. In coming to Christian consciousness, I have a certain belief. It's how how a spiritual master should be one one who is serving as a spiritual master. There are certain qualities 
one they expect from me, from, from him. And I saw the qualities and his holiness, but it is only. First of all, his, his way of protecting devotees. His, his protection for devotees, especially devotees who try to sincerely sign. Very, very protective. I was in Sanya's list for nine years. Usually it is three years. If you are not, you don't meet up with the standard, you are true not. It happened to many people. <laughs> It means the proper disciple I saw, but I was there for nine years. I was able to, to remain there for nine years. It is his holiness with him, Maharaj protection. You know that he gave me some charms and amulet to, to wear. <laughs> it is a spiritual protection. There's so many that one can feel it. And I, I went through a several, several tests, which he himself he did. One, one day he was traveling to to US. He was he was with us in, in Nigeria for six months. And when he was traveling, he sent a, a small piece of paper. He just rolled it. But he wrote something and I rolled it. And he gave it to a senior god brother is a gift to me. I didn't follow him to the airport that day. So some devotees followed. So as I opened it, the devotee gave it to me and he left because he was rushing to meet him and follow him to the airport. So I just opened it because I was curious to know what was inside. I opened it. It's only one sentence. I'm going to send you a woman. <laughs> I, I look at it again. <laughs> I, look, I look at it again very carefully. I'm going to send you a woman. That was, that is the only thing written <laughs> inside, inside, inside the, the paper. See, it's very small paper. So I kept it. The whole day I was, <laughs> I was looking at it. And yes, truly, he did. The point I'm making is that Guru Dev is a pusher. When I, when I say he's a pusher, he knows how to push devotees. Because we, we all know him to be a, a strict, determined, enthusiastic, and faithful devotee. And he served his special master with that spirit. And he wanted also, he wanted every devotee to be like that. That's why he called devotees spiritual warrior. If you are, if you are a warrior, then you should be ready to fight. He doesn't like devotees coming to complain this do this person do like this that person do like this you, you, if you don't want to be in trouble don't do this with him he will chastise you instead he is not going to pet you he will chastise you <laughs> so so I, this, this is my experience with him throughout the whole time he's a pusher he pushed the devotees so he, he's pushing, he's pushing me. I want to send you woman to see you are pretending to be a brahmachari or you are really serious about brahmachari life. It's not that he doesn't know. You know he doesn't know. A, a teacher never set the exam to fail a student. A teacher set the exam to prove, to, for the student to prove for the same. And as I said, he's very, very protective. Before, before he does anything, Test to me, he was inform me before the time. This I have seen many times. He would inform me. No, you not, you not, you not say physicality. He does that regularly. 
when I came to the movement, I came with a religious background. I was, I was thinking that everything in the education movement was very really perfect, pure, smooth, nice, everything would be wonderful, sweet, obeisances from all directions to be cheered up in everything that we do. I was not expecting something which <laughs> is not happening. For example, uh, in my Kalmi life, I've not been to police, I've not been to court. So Gurudev knows that I have this, uh, this small mind. Uh, I use the word push, he is a pusher. So he, he gave me severe anxiety. For the first time, I have to go to court face a lot of police. The temple, he asked me to go and lead. The first time you were being a temple president, the car was stolen. Before I got to the temple, the car of the temple was stolen. And I went to, to, to the person who bought the car. And I discovered that the car was sold to him. So when, when I came and they reported it to our authority, they didn't believe me. They didn't believe me. I was so excited. I was tense up. I have to go to police. And eventually went to court. So I have to go to court. I have to go to police every day, every day. I've never done this. <clears throat> All these challenges I was facing or going through, it is his making to remove this religious mind. We should know that uh, our Christian consciousness starts from our religious ground. Krishna is telling Arjun to fight. That is not religious. That is not, not the religious thing, but that is the beginning. Krishna started Arjun, started teaching Arjun how to fight and not just fighting enemies, fighting a relative. It, it, it is not an easy thing. If you are fighting an enemy, it's a different thing. You you know you 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 put a lot of effort, but you are fighting your own brother. That is not an easy thing. This is what happened. The good day created the crusader <laughs> in the temple, and <laughs> I'm going to live for the first time because he knows this. How how are you going to manage with this kind of a small mind? You have to be strong to to face the world as he is. One day he told me, don't you see how I'm attacked? Can't you see? Why you think that the situation would be different? And then I remember in the Bible, Jesus said, the world hate me and they will hate, they will, they will my followers, they will have more hatred on my followers than with the hatred they have in me. So all the anxiety he passed through, all the difficulties he passed through, his followers, his followers also will pass through the same thing. This is Parampara. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, thank you. We are, we are going to quickly uh, shift and we are going to allow His Holiness uh, Chandramali Swami, thank you very much, um, to present. And I, we will. I'm sure we're going to see you shortly. Okay, maybe right. we're going to. Oh, possibly. We actually possibly uh, may. We may wait maybe two more minutes. <laughs> so, just to uh, let you know that Chandramali will be speaking very shortly, and I'm going to uh, let you continue. <laughs> Sorry. He's not yet. He's not. He has not entered the room yet. He has, but I think not physically. But the uh, screen says that he's here. But I think in a few minutes he'll be at the screen. So, thank you very much for your flexibility. <laughs> All right. Yes, I was talking about the Guru Dev say the way of training his soldiers to be ready for any eventuality because that is how he lives his life. Like at the end of his life, he said, 
I took a lot of risk in this movement. And the reason is to prove to my brothers and sisters my faith in Sri Prabhupada and Krishna. I want to show the level of his faith in, in his Guru Prabhupada and Lord Krishna. For that reason, he took a lot of risk. And he also trained his followers to have the same determination, the same faith. <clears throat> we don't have don't have this but in, the training was given. We have not developed it yet, but the training has been given. And he perfectly did it. See, no one had to pass on his message. <laughs> in a way, they wouldn't forget it. If he chastised, you cannot forget it for eternity. Even though you see him, he's always smiling, smiling broadly. But one minute chastisement, you know, forget it for eternity. And it's very really powerful. Purification, purification, very powerful. We, we enjoy all this thing with him. And so we feel very, very proud to have a special master like his holiness, Bhakti Jesuit Maharaj. And we want to live our life by his mercy. We're begging his mercy to live our life in appreciation for what he did in our life. And the life of uh, other devotees, not only his uh, devotees in general, because I remember some years he took a, a world tour. And he learned a lot of uh, things from the devotees around the world where he visited. And that added to his, uh, to his uh, a desire to, to extend more of, of himself to others. And the books he wrote after that also carry a lot of messages from different experiences he had with different devotees. He felt very sorry at the same time. He felt if I'm not sure if other people are getting a cut feedback, but I am. And I think we are going to switch over. I, we'd like to welcome His Holiness Bhakti. Uh, sorry, we'd like to welcome. We'd like to first thank Bhakti Dhamadar Swami for his um, wonderful words of introduction, and we would like to invite His Holiness Chandramali Swami to share um, some words. And we would like to first allow Kamitha Prabhu to garland him and I will do the introduction. So His Holiness, so thank you very much Kamita Prabhu for offering the garland and I will read the uh, intro. All right, so His Holiness Chandramali Swami is a disciple of uh, is confounder Acharya, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, and an initiating spiritual master within the ISKCON movement. He was born in New Jersey, uh, USA in 1947 and His Holiness Chandramali Swami became, uh, came in contact with the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in Denver, Colorado at the age of 24. In 1973, he began practicing Krishna Consciousness in New York City and shortly thereafter began serving at the New Vrindavan Farm community in West Virginia. That same year, he received initiation from his uh, divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, and he has been preaching and inspiring devotees all over the world. Thank you, Maharaj. We will have you speak for 15 minutes. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Great to see you. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> My obeisance is. Thank you, Mother Krishna Shakti. The Mom Vishnu Padai, Krishna Prestai, Bhutan, Shimakti Bhakti Viranti Swami Namine. Namaste, Sir Swati Deve Gauravani Pachari Mini, who says, Sunni Vadi, Pasyati Devi Kai. Mom Vishnu Padai, Krishna Prestai, Bhutan, Shimakti Bhakti Kirti Swami Namine. Daisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasana Gaur Mahavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Hare
Um, I hope you can hear me. My, I'm in Mayapur, and my uh, my internet's a little weak, and so sometimes it's a little unsteady. <clears throat> and so if, let me know if there's a uh, fallout in the sound. Um, and this has been, uh, again, another opportunity to glorify a person who we can never forget, even though he has departed our present existence on this planet more than, uh, see, 2005. It's been 17, 18 years since the departure of Bhakti Tirtha's family. And it's amazing because of the impressions that he left in the world, in the society of the Krishna consciousness, the, and in the lives of so many devotees, his personal presence seems to be very much vibrant, you know, although 18 years have passed. It's been like that for me. In fact, I remember him. I mean, when he first left, I was remembering him every day for years and years and years, and still I remember him quite often, even now, and I remember him for his uh, dynamic preaching in the sense that um, he spoke the truth without uh, patronizing anyone. He spoke it like it is. He was very expert. There was a little of uh, life in his books on uh, servant leadership, uh, he created a revolution in the minds of people in the secular world. I was personally present during the first um, real uh, opportunity we had to honor him uh, right after his departure. And that was in October of 2005 in Detroit. Um, actually, maybe some of the you were there for that program. But there was one person who was there. He was a state senator from the local area. And uh, he came because, not only because uh, he heard about the program, but he came because uh, he wanted to make his own personal statement regarding the impact that Bhakti Kirtaswami had on his life. Being a leader in the secular world, he never conceived of the idea of a leader as being a servant. And I think this is the mindset of most persons who are in the secular world, that if they're in a position of leader, they're a leader. Or if they're not, then you're serving someone. So his idea was he was a leader, but now after reading you know, Spiritual Warrior, I think two, three, and a few other books, and a book on servant leadership that Maharaj also presented, he was astonished, but his astonishment was a revelation in the understanding of what it means to actually be in a position of leadership, that you lead from a position of servant. Uh, of course, that is our understanding. And we as devotees, we are pretty much clear that whatever position we hold, we are a servant. It doesn't matter. And Bhakti Kirtan Swami preached like that, and he also illustrated that in his relationship to devotees and to people in general. He was always in the mood of giving them something that would be beneficial for them, especially Krishna consciousness or direction in life that could help them achieve their goal. And um, this one state senator, I remember his speech was quite, uh, he spoke from a, a, a mood of incredulous. He was, in, he was amazed to understand the position of a, a leader is actually a servant because they see the needs of those that they are leading and they serve those needs and therefore they're serving those that they lead. So he finally understood that and he was glorifying that concept. 
And um, this is also important because as devotees, we also fail sometimes to recognize that whatever role we play, we can never be a, a, nothing but a servant. <clears throat> we, we serve in different ways in whatever position we have. Srila Prabhupada also emphasized that too. And he spoke one time, he said, I've seen my, my disciples as being representatives of my spiritual master. And therefore, I'm serving my disciples because actually they are representing my spiritual master. So I'm actually serving my spiritual master by serving my disciples who have been sent by my spiritual master to assist me in my service to my spiritual master. So... Uh, yeah, this idea of, uh, and this was something that needed to be heard because uh, the, the concept in, in the world, and even it filters into, into spiritual circles also, is that we identify with the position and not so much our Jivaya Sarupai Krishna and Nitya Das, that we all are eternal servants of the Supreme Lord, and we can only be servants in any aspect. Uh, so Bhakti Tirtha Swami was quite dynamic in his uh, way of presenting Krishna consciousness to others. Um, I had a lot of personal uh, opportunities to get his association, which uh, really uh, made a big difference um, when he would come to Gita Nagari. I would call him and he would say, oh, you're here. I would say, I'm here, Maharaj, I'm in the States also. He, say, he would say, come. And I would immediately stop whatever I was doing and immediately join him in Gita Nagari. And he would be so busy sometimes catching up with a lot of it, his, uh, either his writings or that he would say to me, well, you are what time class today. <laughs> but it wasn't that he was so busy that he couldn't do it, but he always wanted to give me an opportunity to preach. And so I, I could see that, that this was his uh, compassion. He gave me that chance associated with him and at the same time to be uh, to be able to serve him by preaching in, in the Bhagavatam classes in Gita Nagari when he was actually scheduled to give classes. And he would do that just to show his kindness to me. Uh, we had many wonderful experiences together. Um, one particular experience that I remember, which was quite interesting, um, Bhakti Tirtha Swami uh, would hold every year around the, the month of May a festival. And usually it would be a two to three day festival. And one of the days would be uh, whatever devotees were uh, in line for marriages, if there were any, then that day would be dedicated to marriages, and then there would be another day for initiations. And uh, we would hold them in Gita Nagari. Sometimes we held them uh, other places. I remember one year we did it in Washington, D.C., but this one year when we were in Gita Nagari, I had been spending time with Maharaj and he was a little bit kind of um, concerned, deep concern. There was a, uh, um, there was some money that was needed to be given for us to, in order to pay for, I can't remember exactly uh, specifically what it was, but it had to do with uh, a payment on the land of Gita Nagari, and it was $30,000. And he didn't have the money available. And so he was thinking, excuse me, he was thinking how to get the money. And so far he had made attempts, but the money wasn't coming. So he was quite in the mood of uh, contemplation and concern because the due date for the money payment was coming up. And if it wasn't paid, there could be a chance that we could lose part of the land of Gita Nagari. So he was concerned. 
So there was one offer that some of the loggers in the area wanted to come down and cut down our trees and they would give us a large amount of money for the trees. And uh, he told me about that. He said, but I can't do that. I said, I can't do that. I can't subject um, how, how much Prabhupada was against cutting down trees simply for uh, financial gain. And so he was completely averse to that. But there was no solution. And then during this festival, um, one night, um, uh, he would like to offer Arti sometimes to uh, Sri Sri Radha uh, Damodar. And so it was the evening Arti. So he went on the altar. And while he was on the altar, later on he told me that he was praying to Radha Damodar, please help us find this and where can we get this money while he was offering the arti. And then he kept hearing this voice, which was repeated to him. He was hearing it in his mind and he kept hearing the word name, was a name he said, Henry, Henry. Of course, later after he came off the author to me, came right to me and he started, well, there was one quite wealthy man. He was quite favorable to Krishna consciousness. He was loved by the devotees and very generous. And he was there and his name was Henry. And he was sitting amongst the devotees in the temple room. So my, Well, um, yeah. I was praying, and I, but then I was thinking, everybody asks Henry for money. You know, I can't do that. But then it seemed like Krishna was pointing him in that direction. And so he told me the whole story. He said, I'm going to go ask Henry now. So pray for me. <laughs> so I was watching, and he left my... Uh, association went over to Henry and he sat down to Henry and then they, they were talking and I, of course, this was at a distance. I couldn't hear anything. And uh, so at one point I could see a, a very astonished look on Henry's face. It looked like he was not so happy. But then after a few moments, a big smoke came up with Henry's face and then the conversation ended and Maharaj came back and then I asked him, well, what happened? <laughs> and he, he said, well, it's amazing because somebody gave Henry a lottery ticket. They just gave it to him and that ticket was a winning ticket. And he won uh, a car, which was worth $35,000. <laughs> and so... He said that, uh, yeah, that he was going to uh, take that winning ticket and then uh, cash in the car and give the money to Bhakti Kirtaswami. And that's what happened. So it was, you can see how, how close Bhakti Kirtaswami was to Krishna, that Krishna was speaking to him. Now, here's the solution. And uh, then he acted on that. That was an interesting experience. <laughs> Me. that in my life um, I could see how much he was really dedicated to serving Sri Sri Radha um, and of course uh, uh, he would invite the devotees to join him in that mood of service Maharaj was really really a person who could had a foresight to really see things in a uh, complete way. He, he was quite revolutionary in explaining his feelings, and especially to other senior devotees, his god brothers and others, who were quite astonished. Uh, of course, he made that famous uh, class. In, uh, it's called famous because everyone remembers it who were there. And uh, 
I, I can't remember the year. Might have been 2000, right around that year, 2001 or something, where he, uh, this was among the GBC uh, times they were meeting. So many of the GBCs were at the, uh, practically all of them were at the Bhagavatam class when Maharaj spoke. And he very much took everyone to task that we're not up to the standards as leaders in our movement. And we have to really give more attention to the needs of the devotees, as opposed to just making policies for programs to go on. And he spoke quite strongly, almost in the mood of correction, which was. And later on, some people became quite disturbed with the class, <laughs> but that was okay because it had an effect. It had an effect. And uh, uh, Maharaj, in that mood of wanting to make a difference, would point out that as leaders, well, we shouldn't be so uh, aloof from those we lead. And of course, since that time, that was back 20 and some years ago, I think the mood has changed a lot. But Maharaj was way ahead in that mood. He would take time. He gave time to the Guru Kulis. He gave time to the children. He gave time to all different categories of devotees who are struggling in their Krishna consciousness. And because of that, he became very dear to everyone. And his time was whatever he could do to make a difference to help the devotees move forward in Krishna consciousness. One time I had asked him, <clears throat> I said, Maharaj, you're meeting so many devotees and so many groups of devotees. What, what do you tell them? <laughs> what do you tell them? And uh, he, uh, one time he responded by, by saying, <clears throat> a lot of times I don't say so much, I just listen. He said they need somebody to talk to. They want they need somebody to let them hear about their struggles. And and so I'm there for them. I also say something, but ultimately I let them speak. And because they feel like someone cares, that's the biggest difference in their in them moving forward and tackling the, the problems that they undergo. We have to care as leaders in the position. We have to care for the devotees to make time for the devotees. In fact, that is our, he made that his main service. Aside from preaching Krishna consciousness and writing his books, he was very much uh, focused on giving his time to devotees. Whatever apparent. I was uh, I was thinking something that I shouldn't have been thinking. He, he picked up on my mindset. <laughs> you know, uh, I was watching yeah, how he was spending so much time with the children and the women and dealing with their needs, with their struggles. So I was just thinking like that. And I said, wow, he spends a lot of time with the children and with the women like that. So I was thinking in a puzzled way. And uh, I, when I was thinking that, while that thought was in my mind, I, he looked at me and he said, uh, uh, they need it. They need it. <laughs> so I'm here to give it. So he, uh, he could actually read my mind. <laughs> I think he could do that with a lot of us. He could understand you know, our moods and how to deal with that. Therefore, uh, because of his compassionate nature, and I think it will be speak about Bhakti Tirtha Swami. He did whatever he could to spread Krishna consciousness and to help devotees overcome their struggles in their own execution of devotional service in a way that, that actually made them feel confident that they could move forward in Krishna consciousness. So he was. He was there for the little guy. He was there for everybody. And uh, he always had time. And that was uh, that was the beauty of his uh, his life. 
He gave so much time to the devotees. And that need was there. And that need was there, especially during those years in the 1990s. Those struggles around that time. A lot of problems were arising in different areas. And Maharaj, even the GBC, would, would sometimes ask him to do some troubleshooting in areas that needed to be um, needed to be investigated. And so he was, uh, and he, he taught that by his example of how we should take time to care for each and every devotee, no matter who they are, no matter what they have within the society. And he was like that in people in, people in general. Um, there is so much to the life of Bhakti Tirtha Swami. I, of course, we have a beautiful book, The Black Lotus. But again, I, I think there should be some more writings about Bhakti Tirtha Swami. He, there's so much that could be, again, either re-explained -exp again or uh, things that may have been left out in the original biography that are important, very personal, very, uh, for, he, had a, he had a sense of foresight. He could see things that were coming up. I remember one time I was sitting in his room and he, of course, he had quite a, a mixed, mixed library. Aside from Krishna conscious books, he had books on a lot of other areas of, of, uh, of subject matters. And so uh, one time I was just sitting with him. I wasn't saying anything. And he pointed to these books and he said, he said, I had to read a lot of these books in order to me, for me to get an insight how to, to reach people in different areas of life. He said, I did that as a service um, because I needed to get an insight on people who are of that same mentality or that same direction. So he sacrificed his time to learn about others in order so he can preach to others. He was one of the more dynamic leaders who was in the secular world also as, long, as much as he was in the, uh, in the spiritual society. He, he uh, spoke to people in the Pentagon, he spoke to people in different areas. He spoke to writers also. And, um, Stephen Covey really liked his whole presentation on, uh, on uh, different points on what, what it means to become a leader. So uh, Maharaj covered a lot of areas in his re reaching out. And it's just now that a lot of us starting to do the same thing that Maharaj was doing years ago. He was the more or less set the standard for be able to pull people in from different areas of, of backgrounds into Krishna consciousness by using a combination of the Krishna consciousness and awareness of what they are experiencing and how they will be attracted to hear of a message more and more. So, um, and uh, I had some, you know, very sweet moments with Maharaj in Chicago when he would come and visit in Chicago, and it was mostly in Gita Nagari. And many times, of course, dancing with him in Kirtan was an experience. Um, it's interesting because people may not be always aware, but when he first joined the Krishna consciousness movement, he was not most so much inclined to the to dancing. But somehow or other, after staying for some time, he saw the beauty of the Krishna consciousness and, and the importance of chanting and dancing. And he made that a focus to inspire devotees. We would come to the, to the kirtans and, and uh, the different programs in Gita Nagari and the and he would always be dancing and including making sure he include each and every devotee who was in the temple and within the within the kirtan. So he was um, always concerned about others 
and how to bring others up in their Krishna consciousness, how to inspire them, how to make them happy, just uh, that's, that's a real Vaishnava, always thinking about the benefit of others. And Maharaj exemplified that in all areas, in his writings, in his activities, in his lectures, everything was centered around bringing people to Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. This has been very beautiful. I'm glad you brought up uh, Senator Hanson Clark on his pastimes in Detroit and talking about the different ways that Maharaj would interact uh, with devotees. Is my time up or? Uh, yes, uh, just about, yes. Probably like 30 more seconds to a minute. Your video is not on, I'm not sure. <laughs> My video, in, yeah, um, yeah. I, I I have a nice story about Krishna Shakti. Did I tell it? Thirty seconds. <laughs> I was at that Krishna Shakti's initiation. It was in Gita Nagari outside. There was a little grassy area, a little bit of distance away from the temple where sometimes we would hold gatherings there. And so I think Radha Swami was there, and Rakhi Tirtha Swami, myself, and we got a few other senior devotees were also there. And Krishna Shakti was getting initiated. <laughs> and I remember her when she uh, spoke. I, I think it was during her initiation and she was saying that I was thinking he, he got my mother, he got my father, he got my brother, but he's not going to get me. <laughs> am, I, uh, am I correct in saying what I'm saying? Very much so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then, but it was like you know like, well, he's not going to get me but here I am I'm, I got it <laughs> he saved me from myself <laughs> yeah, so that was nice so, yeah. <laughs> no yes no definitely Maharaj thank you so much I know you've been there and you've always been there with Maharaj and uh, yeah you're just like one of the closest uncles that I feel like we have well, for many of us that were in Gita Nagri. So we, we love you. We, we really appreciate you. You know, you've always been there and you've just been amazing, sweet, and just awesome. And always dancing enthusiastically and inspiring devotees. So I can't wait to see you again soon. <laughs> and so thank you so much for blessing us with your presence and sharing the nectar from Mayapur. <laughs> Chai. <laughs> Okay, so thank you, Mother Shakti, and my obeisances to all the wonderful devotees. Okay, so we are going to the uh, next section, which will be a video quiz by His Holiness Bhakti Chirtha Swami. I are on His Holiness Bhakti Chirtha Swami. Okay. <laughs> All right, so quiz one, session one. Please identify the personality in the pastime of His Holiness Bhakti Chirtha Swami from the video. Hari Haraye Nama Krishna Jado Bayo Nama
All right. Please identify the personality in the past time of the, of, in the video of His Holiness Bhaktachirtha Swami. Is it A, His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami gifting Nasimha Danda? B, Uncle Nanda Maharaj gifting the Nishingha Kane? C, His Grace uh, Pankajangri Prabhu giving Nasimha Danda Prashadam? Or D, none of the above? So you will have about 30 seconds to respond via the poll. Sorry, I don't have the Jeopardy music. We did have music before. <laughs> All right. So it appears the audience is split in terms of uh, in terms of their responses. And the answer is dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it is pretty much split. The correct answer is B, Uncle Nanda, Norman, gifting the Singha cane. All right. And Norman's greatest service, perhaps, was when he conveyed Srila Prabhupada's true status to John. As explained in the previous chapter, many years after the incident, John repaid the favor by initiating Norman into the eternal tradition of Vaishnavism, gifting him, uh, giving him the name Nanda Maharaj, which is the name of Krishna's father in the spiritual world. Once initiated, John all, always referred to him as Uncle Nanda, showing him the respect due, an, due, to, due to an elder and the love appropriate for a mentor. This is from the Black Lotus, chapter four, Enter the Dark Lord. There was never a time in our relationship that he left me down, let me down, or wasn't there for me. And Nanda Maharaj's guidance and lessons were fully full of creativity. Actually, Nanda Maharaj personally carved for me my famous Nasimha Dev King. Paradoxically, people considered him my disciple, but the Supreme Lord actually knows that Nanda Maharaj Prabhu was one of my most important spiritual mentors. And this is from Beggar 3, False Ego, Meditation 19. All my mentors are gone. What am I to do? All right, question number two. In which year did His Holiness Bhaktivedanta Swami become an initiating spiritual master? A, 1981, B, 1983, C, 1985, or D, 1987? All right, and you will have the opportunity to uh, answer in a poll. Right now, you'll have about 30 seconds. Ooh, okay. Looks like the poll is split. Also, about 10 more seconds. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And the correct answer is 1985. C. All right, the audience is split in that answer as well. All right, Ishvara Das, one of the earliest African devotees, having joined ISKCON in 1980, explains the Swami's early days on the continent. Right from the beginning, Maharaj was establishing contacts with prominent people, such as ministers, educators, and so on. His idea at the time was that if intelligent and prominent people take to the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, it would be easier to convince the general public. So when Maharaj came and many African devotees started joining, they saw him as their natural leader. His major pre preaching in Africa started around 1981, and he became an initiating guru at the end of 1985. Even so, he started initiating disciples around 1986, taking a year to engage in prayer and to contemplate the meaning of being a guru. Previous to that, he was representing Kirtanananda. Yashoda Ma was one of the first disciples in Nigeria, which was in 1986. 
as she joined at that time, all the devotees in West Africa previous to that time were initiated by Kirtananda Swami. I was one of the Kirtananda Swami's first African initiation ceremonies. I was in, okay, yeah, in uh, 1981. This is from Black Lotus, chapter six, Passage to Africa. Question number three. In what frequency Maharaj wrote letters to Srila Prabhupada in his personal diary? And how many minimum rounds uh, did he chant on a daily basis? Was it A, he wrote on the weekends, <laughs> uh, enchanted a minimum of 16 rounds. B, he wrote daily, chanted a minimum of 32 rounds. C, he wrote on all festival days, chanted a minimum of 48 rounds. Or D, he wrote on Vyasa Puja days, chanted a minimum of 64 rounds. Which do you think? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I think uh, most people have a idea of the answer. This is a uh, nice. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. All right, and the correct answer is B. He wrote daily and chanted a minimum of thirty-two rounds. Okay. So Kalakanta Prabhu, who probably traveled with Ganesham on the library party uh, more than any other of the devotees, gives details about his day-to-day -day practice. In those days, he would get up early about 2 a.m. and chant his rounds, more rounds than the rest of us. We would then work all day to find a campground or a hotel in the evening, take rest, get up early, and do our practices. He'd get up at two o'clock and write a letter to Srila Prabhupada every morning. This was his practice for years. He never or rarely sent the letters, just kept them in his diary of sorts. And he'd be very quiet. And every night he would go to bed listening to this particular tape of Prabhupada chanting Hare Hare, Hare Hare Nama Krishna, the traditional song in a very mystical and exotic melody. It was, uh, it was his unbreakable routine, and he would write his letter, and then he would be he would very gently call, at, and and say at four o'clock, and I'd shower, then we would chant our japa together, and have a Bhagavatam class. Now he had a this rock stead, his solid rock, sadhana or practice, and he would chant in a way that kind of reminded me of a Southern Baptist revival chanting Japa, softly, but almost like singing. It's hard to describe. His left, uh, his left hand tucked behind uh, his right elbow and his back, uh, in his back, and he would stand there just kind of shuffling and swinging with full absorption. Of course, we had no room to walk but it was like a gospel prayer, the way he chanted Japa. It was as if he were saying hallelujah with a big smile. It wasn't really singing, but speaking with kind of, kind of exuberance. And somehow we worked in 32, sorry, somehow he worked in 32 rounds a day, sometimes more and wrote his letter to Prabhupada. And we'd have a and we'd have a very focused class and prepare for Shadam, our mill. And this is from Black Lotus, chapter four. The party rages on. All right, wonderful. Okay, so up next we would like to introduce uh, His Grace Guru Prabhu. And while we're doing it, that we would like to invite Jagadish. Prabhu to, uh, from Ghana to offer a garland. All right, so I'm going to read an intro. All right, so His Grace uh, Guru Prabhu, Guru Das Prabhu, uh, was one of the very first pioneering disciples of Srila Prabhupada. He was one of the first 
he was one of the first uh, devotees who had who was already developing the San Francisco Temple when Srila Prabhupada arrived in 1967. He was one of the six devotees who first went to England, met the Beatles, establishing Krishna consciousness in London. Gurudas was one of the first devotees joining Prabhupada in India, uh, initially overseeing the building of the Krishna Balaram Temple in Vrindavan. Many of the icon Iconic photos of Srila Prabhupada were taken by him in the early days. So thank you for offering this wonderful garland, uh, Jagadish Prabhu. Jagadish Das Prabhu. Um, Krishna Shakti Mataji? Am I reading? A... Yes. Go Hi, Krishna. Krishna Shakti Mataji. Uh, sorry, Gurudas Prabhu's internet connection isn't working. Oh, Where he wonderful. is, is in the north of England. So right. he sends his apologies. Okay. That he won't be able to make it. He may be able to make it later in the second session. Oh, thank so you so much. Could we? I'm so sorry to everybody. My, uh, he apologizes as well. But uh, he sends his blessings. And can we ask Bhakti Charadisha Swami Maharaj's video or for him to speak, please? Or for him the garland as well? Thank you. Okay. That sounds wonderful. Okay. All right. So we will have uh, wonderful words from um, a video offering. And so, uh, so Bhakti Charung Deshna Swami is a uh, disciple of His Holiness Bhakti Chirta Swami and joined ISKCON in 1987 and, and took sannyas initiation from His Holiness Kavi Chandra Maharaj in 2015. He is a coordinator of ISKCON West Africa Francophone Zones and he travels regularly to preach and inspire devotees all over the world. All right, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, this is uh, Bhakti Chandra Swami. And uh, I would like to make my small offering to Gurudev Srila Bhakti Tita Swami Maharaj on his uh, Esa Puja. Navahom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Tita Swami Jinanami Namaste Krishna Padaya Pabhupa Sthatmane Sri Gaura Karuna Sati Bhakti Jinanami Navahom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Jinanami Namaste, Haravaste, Vego, Ravani Prashani, Nilvese, Sasunya Vadi, Patsa Satani, Homajan, Timiradas, Jan, Jan, Sarakaya, Takshumini Tam Tashma, Shugura Vimaka, Srila Bhakti, Jasun Maharaki Jai. Yes, uh, it's always uh, very nice to speak on, uh, to speak about uh, uh, Srila Bhakti, Jasun Maharaj, my beloved Gurudev. And uh, when I reflect on the time, it's uh, 2005 that uh, he, he left the planet. The memories are still very fresh in my, in my mind. And uh, I always feel his present all the time. So my first encounter of uh, Srila Bhakti Tita Maharaj was uh, in 1989. I was uh, a college student and uh, I was uh, under the crossroads of my life. So many questions I was asking myself without any solution. And uh, I met Gurudev at a very appropriate time. Yeah, I remember one time he, he, he told my, uh, when I joined ISCOM, my senior brother, because so that was big panic at home. My father, my mother, and one of my brothers and sisters they were panicking. So my uh, uh, father sent my senior brother to the temple to tell me to go back home. And uh, <clears throat> when he came to the temple, I asked my senior brother to meet me in the room of Gurudev. So, Gurudev was, Gurudev said something very interesting, very amazing, and I was really shocked, shocked. And he said uh, to my senior brother, look, your junior brother is at a safe hand. I'm representing uh, his father and his, his mother. So I was wondering how can, you know, I was still new devotee, you know, Bhakta, how can a person coming from America, you know, 
claim to be my father and at the same time my mother. But I was really touched by, by that and I feel really secure and uh, I thought that oh, yes, I was in the, in the good hand. So in that way, I uh, start uh, developing more and more uh, love and attraction to uh, Gurudev. And uh, if you want to speak about mercy, I think, uh, uh, I don't know if there are other devotees, other de disciples of Gurudev who got uh, uh, more mercy than I, I, I got. Because throughout, throughout my devotional life, it was just mercy of Gurudev, mercy and mercy and mercy, always mercy. Yeah. My life was completely made, my devotional <laughs> life was completely made by uh, Gurudev. I don't think I could have reached that position I am now without the blessing of Gurudev. Even till now, I still, you know, sending the blessing. So uh, it's really uh, uh, always blissful to remember in such person, such personality. It was my uh, my everything, and uh, I remember when uh, he, I spoke to him that uh, I want to improve my devotion service and he sent me he sent me to he personally arrange you know uh, some Lakshmi some money for me to uh, you know, come to to, to Mayapur and uh, study Bhakti Sashi and other courses and uh, when I finish one time I remember one one, one thing very interesting also he, uh, he, uh, he asked me because I got one year visa to come to Mayapur and yeah to study so after the Bhakti Sashri, yeah, after four months, I still had uh, six months, another six months to stay in India. So he asked me to go to uh, Chopati and Brindavan and Mumbai, uh, all other all places. And he said to me, please stay a few days in Brindavan and stay the rest of the time in Mumbai. So I was not understanding why. Because no. Uh, they were coming from Africa and coming to India. The, 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 the dream, you know, is to even uh, you know, stay longer in Mayapur and, uh, you know, Vrindavan and in all the places. And he told me to stay a few days in Vrindavan and stay a longer time in Chobat. So later on, I understood why he told me like that. Because I met uh, such nice devotees in Chobat Temple. That was a really good association, real Sangha. Because, you know, if you perform devotion service without proper guidance, proper association, then there's no guarantee that you can continue your devotion life smoothly. So, we would have had that vision that I just arrived you know, from Africa, no uh, association before, like, and like, like that. So, okay, you stayed more time in. But then I got so much very nice association with uh, 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 devotees there. And when it is time for me to you know <laughs> go back to uh, Africa, my mind started ticking me that why not telling Guru Dev that you have to stay, you know, <laughs> more after one year. Then uh, I uh, wrote him a letter message. Those days, no, 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 no WhatsApp, you know, no, no Facebook, you know, only, only, only email. So I sent him an email message. I know Gurudev, <clears throat> he has two ways to, uh, to respond to, to messages. He can say, uh, he can, at the bottom of the, of the message, he can say, with love. Or also, he can address to, to you directly from, with your name. You know, or I can say, my dear son. So when you say, my dear son means the, the message is very, it's okay, it's very good message. But when he addresses you directly as a name, it means the message is very strong. So when I send him a message that I want to stay longer in uh, in, in India, in Vrindavan, then uh, he got, I got him the reply, I went to check the, the, the response, and uh, I check on the bottom. And he put with love. And I check on, on top of the message, he said, My dear son. Wow. When he said, I saw my dear son means the letter is not so strong. And he said, Yes, you will have to go back to Africa.
Africa and you will have chance to come back again in India. And when I follow that instruction, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how many times I've been, I'll come back to India again. Maybe twelve times. I don't know. Many times I've come back to India. So the, this, this is due to Gurudev uh, and a blessing. So uh, I always remember him, whatever I do. And one message, one strong message, uh, I, 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 I remember from him, from him when I wrote him a letter, let message one day that uh, I'm having uh, so much troubles, troubles after my initiation. Then he asked me, have you seen a, uh, a, 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 a student without exam? I said, no. I said, yes. Now that you are officially initiated, you are officially a devotee of Raptor Krishna, then you must have some evaluation, some test will come. Then we devotees, sannyasis, gurus, uh, do you think we don't, we don't have, uh, you know, proper troubles? We do have, but uh, when Maya comes, we are all busy, always busy. So there is no test that a guru or a teacher can give to his disciple or a student that is higher than his capacity. So a student or a disciple who failed the exam or the test, it means it is not do his homework. It is not learn a lesson. So till now, I still remember this message from Guru Dev, and that, that has been guiding me since I joined ISKCON, since I, I remember this message, I always move smoothly, and I'm sure that Guru Dev is always by my side, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to uh, get a very a nice destination with the blessing of Guru Dev. Srila Bhakti Samimarar Ki Jai. All right, that was beautiful. It's beautiful getting the pastimes of Guru Dave in, in different ways from around the world and how he inspires us. Okay, so now we are moving to the uh, next section, section where we will offer a or well, present a video from His Holiness Bhakti Chircha Swami's uh, journey in Ghana. And Hare Krishna, His Holiness Bhakti Chichi Swami, also widely known in West Africa as Swami Krishnapad, was and still is an ideal father, mentor and spiritual master to many. In this video, we will be highlighting on some of the places His Holiness visited in Ghana. As we all know, Maharaj pioneered the establishment of many temples in Ghana, such as Shishi Radha Govinda Temple in Accra, Shishi Radha Gopina Temple in Kumasi, and Shishi Gauranitai Temple in Nkoko, and other temples in Sunyane and Obuasi. Undoubtedly, Maharaj positively affected the hearts of anyone who had his divine association. Maharaj was also well known for his enthusiastic media preaching like his interview at Metro Television in Accra, Ghana. An evangelist who appeared regularly on television. As a young man, you were a leader in Dr. Martin Luther King. In fact, Genius this interview was so interesting that it captivated the heart of the president at that time, so the late His Excellency Jerry John Rawlings. As a result, the president requested that his television station would play that particular interview several times. It then became obvious that the president desired the association of Swami Krishnapal and fortunately for him, his desire got fulfilled. And this is how Maharaj, out of his humble nature, visited the president at the Flagstaff House in Accra, Ghana. It was such a lovely exchange his Excellency was so astonished by Maharaj's deep wisdom that he requested him to be his personal advisor. However, Maharaj humbly declined. Another major place His Holiness Bhakti Chesha Swami visited was the Mansia Palace, where he met the then king of the Ashanti region, 
His Royal Highness Nana Otunfo Opokuware II. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, whatever a great man does, common men follow. And this was the intention of Maharaj for meeting various leaders of society. In so doing, Maharaj visited His Royal Highness any time he went to the Shanti region. How fortunate the king was. His Holiness Bhakti to Swami also played a very important role in the Muslim community of Kumasi Shanti region. He did some preaching at the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission. He usually participated in their interfaith programs. Maharaj also did not forget the ordinary Ghanaian. He conducted various Harinam and Food for Life programs, especially at the marketplaces. Such a humble personality he was, that he extended his mercy also to the street folks. One of the major marketplaces Maharaj did his preaching was the Kegetia Central Market in Kumasi, Shanti region. Kegetia, currently known as the biggest marketplace in West Africa, even though at that time it was not that big and was mostly referred to as the Kegetia Playground. It was a very busy location where thousands of people were seen shopping. So we can imagine the number of people who received Maharaj's mess. One of the iconic places Maharaj again preached or visited was the Kumasi campus of the University of Education, Winneba. Now, let us end with this interesting story. Once when Maharaj had arrived at this particular university, of course to preach, he headed straight to the auditorium only to see empty seats. After waiting for a while, he asked the devotees that they go back to the temple since no one showed up. However, on their way back, the devotee who was then driving Maharaj was not familiar with the Kumasi city, therefore was not really sure of the accurate directions back to the temple. As a result, they decided to return to the Kumasi campus to pick one of the Kumasi devotees who was believed had not left yet to drive instead. To their amazement, they returned to the campus only to hear and see that the same empty auditorium was now packed with hundreds of students. It appeared the students did not hear earlier of His Holiness's visit due to poor arrangements. And of course, Maharaj sees this wonderful opportunity to go ahead with his usual powerful preaching. The program turned out to be so successful. The students asked so many wonderful questions and brought so many books. Such is the costless mercy of Krishna and his pure devotees. And everyone became so ecstatic. We pray that Maharaj bestows his costless mercy on us so we can carry out his legacy. His Holiness Bhakti to Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Guru Dave. Oh my goodness. Thank you, devotees in Ghana. That was an amazing, loving offering. Beautiful. Thank you all so much. That was that was so rich. Oh. All right. So now we are going to announce the winners of session one. And we will have a uh a special guest speaker this uh, evening or afternoon or <laughs> morning for you all. Uh, His Holiness Radhana Swami will be speaking to uh, close out session two. 
All right. And, and definitely we want to thank everyone uh, who has contributed today. All right, quiz results. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so for question number one, we have Madhusundana Vishnu Das, uh, second place, Nitai Shaitanya Das, third place, Adi Radhika Devi Dasi. Second question, we have uh, number one is Nitai Shaitanya Das, second is Sri Devi Dasi, uh, third is Madhusundana Vishnu Das, and for the third question, Swaha Devi Dasi, Primval, uh, yeah, Primvali. Palvi, <laughs> Devidasi, Nitikishori Rada, Devidasi. All right, congratulations. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So we are going to have, I want to thank everyone for coming this morning. Thank you so much for His Holiness, Bhaktivedanta Damodar Swami and Kavichandra uh, Swami for coming and blessing us with the presence and starting this day off in the right way. Uh, thank you for the wonderful videos um, from Ghana and from many different parts of West Africa and the world. So we are going to continue this after, what, in a couple hours. So let's see exactly, at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, we're starting here. Um, there are different times all around. You can check the um, poster for uh, the details. So that's technically about an hour and 25 minutes from now for those that are uh, wondering. All right, so we are going to have a, a video introduction for the second session um, and also a talk by Her Grace Rukmini Devidasi, followed by a quiz, followed by uh, His Grace Ananta Charya Das, and a offering from Nairobi Yatra, as well as a talk from His Grace Srivas Vanachari Das, as well as a closing talk by His Holiness Radhana Swami. So take rest and come on back. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for coming out.